How you feeling? You know, we are we are slowly getting healthy. That's that's the name of the game. In a 17 week season, sometimes you know you, you get some uh, you get some injuries and you push through. Uh, Saints finally back in the win column. That's that's all I'm worried about. What you are know, the, somewhere somehow? What are the we're, vibes? We're still in the show. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still we're still in the fight. We're still in the fight, and I love it. Uh, okay. Well, my, you know, you said okay, I'm going to start with this. Did you see? You probably didn't see this. I don't know if they put this out. Um, Sean, no, I don't know, who was it? It was not Sean Payton, Payton Manning. Mm. I went on Manning cast and they surprised me with a clip of this show when you said that you wanted to sack Payton Manning still. I asked you, is there a quarterback you never got your hands on? And you said, Payton, Payton, very nervous about this. A lot of anxiety, sleepless nights, thinking you're just gonna show up um, and just like sack him one day. I mean, and, and I think you should, and his family, I believe, lives in New Orleans. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely, definitely, you know, locally based out of here. So eventually <laughs> I'm going to see him in the streets. And he's going to be like coming out of, he looks like a Trader Trader Joe's guy, not a Whole Foods guy. You know, but, but as he's walking out of Trader mean? Joe's, I may, yeah, I may push his cart out the way and get one for the for the one time. You know, I just I just need to know what it felt like. I've, I've sacked the little bro, you know, maybe if I stay, stick around the next couple of years, I'll sack, you know, the nephew. I gotta go after, you know, I gotta go after the last one. You're coming after his nephew. That's very, keeping it in the family. I love Tommy DeVito, <laughs> no, no. we love it. Now you're saying y'all are in it and you are. You you beat Carolina 28-6. There was a three game losing streak, that's over. Your ankle is the most important thing going on with this locker room. How really are you feeling? I know you said you're healing, how fast? Uh, you probably heal faster if you weren't playing every every six days. But you know what? The, the greatest thing about it is I think we have we got guys with with depth and talent. I mean, I think Carl Grandison is is playing excellent this year. Uh, again, we can go down the line. I think you know we've got Tano Passion who who's growing into his role as well as Zach Bond off the edge. And if all I am is a hype man and a first and second down player, I embrace my role right now. For you know when I get back to being healthy, we rotate in and so we make our depth even stronger. Tomorrow, Davis had a heck of a game mm -hmm. last game. He could have had an interception. Um, a multiple sack game, which I think he did. Um, he had, what, one and a half? Could have ended up easily with two and a half, uh, two and a half sacks. I think that, you know, our defense is is understanding of how stout we need to be and how stout we can be uh, when we're all dialed in. So, I'm, I'm again, I'm going to bring all the juice I can to each and every game, and we're going to rock out and see what happens this last four. You know, I think they're, they're winnable games, and if we could take care of what we need to take care of, we should be where we want to be. It's interesting you talk about how you can't, how healthy can you get if you have to play every six days? It's so true. Like people, I mean, fans, I don't think, think about that. You can never be close to 100%. You'll never be as good as you are week one, and you're trying to heal as aggressively as possible. And that brings me to your quarterback, because like Derek Carr, he's battling. He's battling all season long. He's got con concussion stuff and shoulder stuff and fractures and ribs and like stuff that I'm sure he's not even telling anybody, but he keeps battling back. Is there, a, is there like a world where it, it might be a better idea for him to like rest up a little bit over a week, over like take even just one week off to sort of get back out there? Or is it a good thing that he keeps getting the start? And look, in, and, and a warrior mindset, like this it's yeah. not like this is basketball where you can miss, you know, five weeks and like, you know, still have 20 weeks. We were 17 weeks. Each one of these games is even more crucial. So... Uh, it, this war mentality of never being able to back down or never never wanting to back down or always wanting to uh, be on the field with your brothers doing what you can it just it, it comes with the territory and I, I, you'd rather you'd rather see the warrior who's willing to go through heck in, in high water to play on the field than somebody who you know breaks a nail and is like oh I need two weeks to get get me right yeah um, and yeah like it's in this in this day and game you know this day and age you know it's a lot of it's a lot of room for slight excuses and it's it's great to see somebody who's willing to fight through any and all adversity it's, it's great to see uh your quarterback you know have whatever it is ribs back and get up and be like all right well next play like there is no give up in, D in dc and that's one of the greatest attributes that he has he has no back down he has yeah. uh, you know he's in his mind he's trying to throw strikes each and every time and so it, it, for the locker room you love to see it you love to back it up like, all right, but like, all right, this is what he's going through. Great. But he's not complaining about it. He's pushing forward. Like, this is how I can get better. And this is what I want to do. And, you know, uh, yeah, I miss, you know, whatever this is, I can get better in this area. And you see a game like last game where they enter the red zone. They leave. They don't leave unless they're scoring. 
Yeah, y'all have so much respect for him. And I think the thing is that the fan base and what you say matters to this fan base, probably maybe more than anybody there. What you say really matters. Yeah. And you're hearing, I'm not there, but I'm hearing that there's booing. I'm hearing that there's frustration. I think there's an idea that, and really because Derek Carr is so banged up, is he better than Jameis would be? Uh, that is not my pay grade yeah. of a decision to make. I do know that, you know, fans booing, everybody's frustrated. There's There was a time and era where, you know, the, an offense was always ranked as a top three uh, for a long period of time, and fans have that high expectation and high standards, as they should. Nobody, no one fan goes into a season unless, you, uh, without shooting the team, you know, we're going to play since Eli left, you wouldn't say, oh, man, right. I hope we make the playoffs. You go in with the standards of saying, hey, we are going to make the playoffs. We are going to make a deep run to the playoffs. We do want a Super Bowl this year. Every year I've ever stepped onto a field in September, I'd be like, all right, the goal is to win a Super Bowl. Now, whether you achieve that or don't achieve that, the goal is to win a Super Bowl. So each and every win is that much more important. And, and the fans sort of feel that, understand that, and want that for the for the franchise. You know, with with high success over the years, that's come a high level of expectation. Yeah. And so you can feel the fr frustration. And of course, anytime you lose, I'm never going to be ha I'm happy about it. You know, and no one loss if you're ever like, mm, man, this feels good. It's not supposed to feel good. It, you know, this is supposed to, it's supposed to be upsetting. You're supposed to be frustrated when you're not winning. You're supposed to be frustrated when points are, aren't as high as you think are, the defense lets up a touchdown. That's why, you know, as, as being a part of the defense, it feels good knowing that, you know, we play really well in the second mm -hmm. half as a defense, but we, we play great in the first half. It's almost lights out. And, I, you know, as I was thinking, like, there's, like, I, Greg Popovich was running around the court saying, stop booing. There's that There's that way. Please don't boo. boo. But you're saying, I, you, I love this, this take by you. You understand it. You're just as frustrated. So fans are booing because of that, and that's you're not telling them to stop. Oh, I'm telling I'm telling them to rock with us, ride with us. You know, as, as the New Orleans Saints go, as long as we can control our own destiny in this last four games, it it truly matters that the fans are behind the team. If instead of those boos, now it's these fervent, yeah, you know, yelling and bringing the energy, and we turn, you know, a boo into a, a hell yeah, then we're going to go a, a lot further. You know, th that idea that if you enter the New Orleans Saints, you know, Superdome, and you have to face not only New Orleans Saints, but on third down, you, their offense can't do any of the checks. They can't hear because our fans are exactly where they need to be, 70,000 strong, going crazy. Then that's an advantage for us. And so if you can, if you can let the fans know, make the fans understand that we're all in this together because there ain't no way we're going out there trying to just be okay. We're trying to play to the best of our abilities and to the highest standards. So if everybody's on the same page, then there's no telling what we can do in the next four games. When you, when you see what you saw last night with Tommy DeVito and sort of like there's a lot of energy, but now they got to come to that house. they got to come to And after seeing this clip, Saints fans better be loud of being like the force that they can be to help this team close it out and get these wins. What, do you, what did you see when you were watching Tommy DeVito last night in that offense? Yeah, I feel like he's a quarterback who has some gumption to him, but also he hasn't faced us. But I feel like that every time. When I go when I go into a game, I'm going in there with the utmost confidence that our defense is going to show out. We got guys like, you know, uh, what, Peyton, or not Peyton, uh, man of the year candidate, mm -hmm. Tyron Matthews leading our de defense. We've got, you know, Damario Davis. We've got Carl, again, Carl Grandison, Tano Passion, our young guy, uh, and Nathan Shepard and Brian Brzee. Um, I think that, when you when you think about what Tommy uh, Tommy DeVito has done, he still has to face our defense. He still has to go against guys like Paulson Adebo and and, and Alante Taylor. Um, you know, he still got to see my young buck Jordan Howden. Like, there's so many players on our on our defense that are trying to make these plays. You know, we're up to the task each and every time. So if it's Tommy DeVito, it's if Saquon's Barkley, you know, it, it, whoever whoever's up against us, they have to. Be, be aware and be prepared for us and not the other way around. We're going to be prepared. We're going to be ready. And I, just like that, they got to come to our dome and they also have to face our fans. When we all know Saints Nation, when they're really rocking, Woo! there's nobody louder, nobody better. That's all you needed to say. I've, I don't know that I've ever heard you so serious. Hey, we're in the serious part of the season. Yeah. Again, this, this, is, this is net cutting time. I don't, I don't have time to be like, oh, man, we got next game. No, we got this game. And this game's coming up. Is that the message this next stretch? Because you're looking at it at six and seven, 
you're tied. Like, you know, you're serious, but you're, you you could win the division. That's what we're trying to do. NFC South, Bucks, Falcons, four games left. Like, we all wanted you to get to, you know, I, I said I wanted you to snap through that window like the Kool-Aid man, the Super Bowl window, and get yourself one. Is this a team, if this team does it, what will it take? I mean, it takes exactly that. In, in the next four games, we play Atlanta and Tampa Bay. Yeah. So we went out. Don't we clearly control our own destiny. And so there is there is there isn't anything not to understand. We we win. We control our own destiny. We get a ticket to the playoffs, which we haven't seen in two years. That's what we need. That's what we want. I I, I would not want to be Tommy DeVito or any. I would not want to be facing Cam Jordan. <laughs> You are on, you are you are in your bag right now. You are on one. Yeah, absolutely. It's bag. Hey, it's bag season. It's Christmas bag coming up. Season. You gotta bring it back. Get it back. Coming up. What do you want for Christmas? Last question for you. What do you want for Christmas? Uh, <laughs> Even though four, I know what you want. Four wins leading to probably four <laughs> more wins. Hey, like, what do I want for Christmas? A Super Bowl. In whatever capacity we can get it. That's right. And you go get it. And, and I know you're not, you're, you, are, you are about your business today. And we appreciate you, Cam. You're the absolute best. Go do it. And fans, listen to your boy, Cam Jordan. Cam, thank you. No doubt. It's always who that Saints Nation we write. You know, we, we, need, we need all the energy, all the love, and, and go on from there. Yeah. Well, uh, appreciate you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. I'm going back to rehab. Cam, you're so scary today. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, poor Tommy DeVito. That's about, this is about to go away. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.